How's it going everybody? Mark Villarreal with Los Canaleros del 956 on YouTube. LCD 956 bait and tackle. So I've been trying to do a video like this for quite some time and hopefully I'll be doing a lot more videos for you all. So you all can kind of um, get a little education on things that might be important to some people. Some people might not know simple things like these. And as a shop, as a, as a tackle shop owner, I see a lot of people coming in here not knowing the type of gear that they need for their next fishing adventure. So that is what I'm gonna talk about today. Today I'm gonna be talking about how to choose the proper rod and reel for the type of fishing you will be doing when you walk into that local tackle shop store of your choice, right? So there's so many rod and reels out there. There's different types of rods and reels. I'm gonna go over the basics. I'm gonna go over spinning reels, spinning reels with spinning rods, right? because that's gonna that's the most commonly sold type of rod and reel that i sell here at my store of course we sell conventional reels we sell bait casters but the more common ones are going to be your spinning reels they're they're a lot easier to use they're they're not hard to use at all they're easy to learn to use so as a shop owner as a, as a bait and tackle shop owner i have a lot of customers coming in here and they don't know how to choose the proper rod and reel. Luckily, that's what I'm here for. That's what you get when you come shop at least at my bait and tackle store. You know, not only can, can you buy something, but you can be recommended the proper setup, the proper gear to go out there and use for your next fishing adventure. You know, I know you can go to the bigger stores, but a lot of those, a lot of those um, employees out there, they don't really know much about fishing. Some do but a lot of them don't. That's why it's easy, to, it, it's a lot better for you to come by your local tackle store, tackle shop, support local, because we know a thing or two about fishing and we can help you choose your, your next um, rod rear or your rod reel gear, maybe your next lure, your next leader, stuff like that. I hope to make more videos like this for everybody where I can kind of go over maybe lures, um, leaders, different types of leaders and rigs and stuff like that that you can use out there. But I think the proper one for today is gonna be talking about how to choose the proper rod and reel. So as you see in front of me, I got three different types of rod and reels. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call them by your light tackle, your light tackle. And then I'm gonna go to your medium tackle. Your medium tackle. And then I'm going to go to your heavy. Your heavy tackle, your heavy setup, right? So you got your light, your medium, and your heavy. That's what we're gonna call them. Um, I'm not saying that's what they're called, but that's how it'll probably be better understood for some or many of you all. Light, medium, heavy. So let's say you come in here and you're like, Mark, I need a rod and reel, but I don't know which rod and reel to choose. My first question to you is gonna be, what type of fishing are you gonna be doing? If the customer says, Mark, I'm gonna be doing some artificial fishing. I'm gonna be fishing with lures with maybe a um, maybe maybe a three to five inch uh, plastic with a one, one, uh, one quarter, three sixteenth to a one eighth ounce weight. Let's say you're just gonna go out there shallow water fishing, light, fi light tackle fishing, right? This is what I mean, because you can throw artificial lures that are heavy, but this does not apply to this, to this, um, to this rod and reel. So if you are gonna be, if you are gonna be out there throwing artificial lures, for example, your your jerk baits or your uh, your your paddle tails or your curly tails that are not too big, anywhere from a three inch um, to a five inch uh, plastic lure then you probably need something light because there's no way in heck that you're gonna be able to cast a lure of that size far with a heavy setup like this. So right away, the customer's gonna be like, yeah, Mark, I'm gonna be chunking some, some lures out there with uh, no more than a, than a quarter ounce jig head. All right, perfect. So that's what I'm gonna recommend them, the light setup. Now there's so many scenarios. You have rod actions, you have, you have, um, you know, you have your rod actions and your, your rod weight, but that's a lot more stuff that we can talk about on another day. This is just gonna be a simple video on how to pick a quick, proper rod and reel out the store, ready to go. So yeah, you're gonna be throwing some soft plastics, uh, stuff like that, 
you know, a, a lightweight lure, then I'm gonna recommend your light setup, right? Your light setup. This is a seven foot rod. It can be any, any, it can be a six foot rod, a five foot rod, but the ideal size is a seven foot rod. This is gonna be your more common ideal rod here for everybody. So this is your seven foot rod and it's accompanied by a 2500 reel. This is a Shimano. I'm not gonna get into specifications on the type of the brand of rod and the, 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 the reel, but um, what you need to know mainly is you need a, maybe a seven foot medium. You can go medium light if you're not gonna throw heavy lures. You can even go up to a medium heavy. But I think the more ideal one is gonna be stick to a medium, seven foot medium. Now, medium is the weight you also have your action you have moderate moderate fast fast extra fast when it comes to actions it just just remember moderate is a soft tip fast is going to be a more uh, solid more stiffer tip depending how you like to fish if you like to fish fast if you like to retrieve your lure fast or maybe jerk that lure fast then you want to go with a fast action if you're a slow fisherman with like a finesse a finesse fisherman, a lazy uh, bait um, fisherman, then go with your moderate action. That's all I'm gonna talk about actions in between your moderate and your fast action. So remember, seven foot medium, seven foot medium light rod, seven foot medium heavy rod, all three will work. Medium heavy, um, if you're gonna be throwing like a popping cork or maybe um, a, a top water, a big top water, then I would stick more to the medium heavy rod, right? A medium heavy rod because it's gonna be able to take on a little bit more weight okay and always remember 2500 even a 3000 reel can you use a 4000 reel yes can you use um, can you use a heavier rod yes you can but if you want to get the utmost performance out of it go lightweight why because you're throwing lightweight lures you know you want to be able to swing that lure far so you need some light line maybe anywhere from 10, 12, 15 to 20 pound test braided line on this setup right here, okay? So you already know. You already know the line you need, you already know the type of rod you need, and you know the type or, or the size of reel that you need. Now, reel preference, you can go with Shimano, Pen, Daiwa, whatever you desire. What I like about Shimano is when you're going light fishing, Shimano reels are always gonna be on your lighter side. Daiwa is very good with that too. So if you if you rather go with Daiwa, yes, pen is gonna be a little more on the heavier side. Me, I like to go a little a little lighter. You wanna make sure you have a light reel for a light rod so it can balance properly and you can get the utmost performance out of it. So you already know. And there's one more thing that I gotta to touch base on is graphite. Go with a graphite rod. Don't go with a, a e-glass or a fiberglass rod if you're gonna do some light fishing because those rods are heavier and when it comes to graphite, graphite is going to be a lot lighter. Is it more sensitive? Yes, but that's where you have to take care of your rod. You have a graphite rod, so you got to use it properly. That, now that's another subject that we can touch in future videos on how to properly handle a rod so you can um, take care of it and avoid your rod. For, uh, you can avoid your rod from snapping. So we went over light tackle. Okay, let's say the customer comes in. He's like, Mark, I'm going out there. I'm going to be chunking. I'm going to be chunking bait. Um, with like a one ounce, one ounce, one and a half ounce lead weight, I'm gonna be chunking bait. All right, so you're gonna be chunking bait. What type of bait? Yeah, I'll probably put some cut fish or maybe a little bit of a whole live fish or whatever. Then we'll go to the medium action tackle rod, right? So this right here is we're still sticking to a seven foot rod, but this one is already gonna have a little bit more weight capacity. This one says you have up to a one ounce casting lure. What well, says lure weight? Lure weight, it says one ounce. Compared to the light one that I showed you, the light one is going to say one quarter to a half an ounce. Lure weight. That is very important that I gotta touch on also because you gotta respect the rod. If the rod says that it's a, if up to a one half ounce lure weight, that means that the most you're gonna wanna load at the tip of this rod is half an ounce loading it doesn't mean you can't catch a fish greater than half an ounce you sure damn hell you can catch a fish up to 10 pounds maybe more with this light rod but it is not made to cast heavy it's not made to 
to sustain more than half an ounce at the end of that rod tip. So a lot of people are, are wondering, man, what does that mean? That's what that means. If the rod says max lure weight, half an ounce, don't load that blank with more than half an ounce for casting. Don't do that. So back to the medium tackle rod. The medium tackle rod, it's, it's already two times stronger meaning you can cast up to a one ounce. I know I said at one and a half, but to be on the safe side, just keep it to a one ounce weight. If it says one ounce, keep it to a one ounce. Yes, your bait does your bait does um, weigh as, as well as your leader or whatever, but most importantly, the weight that you're putting, let's say you're putting a lead weight to cast your bait, try not to go over an ounce. Some people tend to push it a little more. Now, if you want to take that risk, go for it. You want to take the risk of going one and a half, maybe two ounces, take that risk, but that's on you. That's not going to be on the tackle shop that sold it to you, on the manufacturer of the, of the rod. That is not their fault if you break that rod. That is your fault because you did not respect the weight of that rod. It happens. We live and learn. Now, for whatever reason, it, it, it's able to load more than the one ounce and it works for you and you're, you haven't snapped your rod, by all means, you do what you please. Go for it. So yeah, you're gonna need a medium action rod. This one is gonna be good for, for uh, casting, you know, bait like a chunk, maybe some cut bait and stuff like that with a nice one ounce weight out there in the middle of the lake or at, at, at the jetties or stuff like that. Or let's say you're on a boat and, and you like to chunk bait out there. This is a rod for you. It's a seven foot up to a one ounce capacity it's a, I believe it's a medium. Just because it's a medium doesn't mean it's the same as this medium. Remember, your weight capacity is a lot greater. So this is a stronger rod. It'll handle a little bit more casting weight. And your reel, it's your 4,000. It's your 4,000. You can go from a 4,000 to a 5,000 reel with a medium to a medium heavy for your, for your weight capacity, anywhere from a one ounce to even a two ounce. I know there's some rods out there that can probably go up to three ounces and they still probably feel the same. Just remember that. Just remember the, the, remember the weight that you're gonna be casting. If the weight you're gonna be casting is two ounces and you, and, and you know that you're not gonna be able to cast anything less than two ounces because of the current, the wind, whatever it, it'll be, make sure your rod capacity says two ounces to be on the safe side all right so the 4000 reel is perfect this is still not heavy you can still fish comfortably this is going to be made more for casting set it and forget it now let's say you're casting heavy lures or spoons at the jetties you're casting one ounce spoons it's a one ounce rod a one ounce spoon is pretty heavy then you can go ahead and use this setup for spoons it is going to be heavier than your light tackle, but it's going to be the proper rod for that for that lure. Let's say your lure weighs three ounces. Then you got to look for a rod that can take three ounces of, of weight, right? It's that simple. You're going to the jetties. You're throwing a three ounce spoon out there at the jetties. That's just an example. It can be the lake and you're throwing a three ounce uh, a paddle tail or three ounce weighted paddle tail, whatever. Just make sure you go by the weight capacity of what you're using for the rod that you're going to buy. It's simple. You got your light, your medium, and your heavy, right? So, um, I know some of y'all know this, but there's many people out there that don't. I have a lot of customers coming in here that do not know these basic, simple things, and it's okay. That's what I'm here for. Now, I'm helping educating more people on YouTube and social media so they can go and pick out the proper rod and reel. Now let's move on to your heavy tackle. The customer comes in here's like, Mark, I'm going out there. I'm going to be fishing. I'm going to be fishing the, the, the surf or you, I'm going and I'm going to be fishing this river, whatever water body of water they're fishing. But Mark, I need something that's going to handle up to a three ounce weight, maybe a five ounce weight because the current is so strong. I need something that can handle that weight. And because of the type of fish we're targeting, you know, I need some, some reel that can handle that type of fish. They're doing alligator gar, they're doing monster catfish fishing. They're doing bull red over there at the jetties or, or big red fish or big black drum at the jetties or at the piers or whatever. Now they need a rod that can handle that weight. We're still sticking to the seven foot. 
Seven foot, remember it's your ideal size of rod. We're sticking to seven foot. So now this one says one to six ounce lure weight. Can you believe that? We went from a half ounce to one ounce all the way to six ounce. Yeah, Mark, sometimes I gotta throw a five ounce weight out there because the current's so strong. What do I need? Here you go. This is the rod you need for that weight. You can load it up to six ounces of weight and this rod is going to handle it. Now, Mark, how about real? Well, simple. This is a this is a 60 equivalent to a 6,000. I'll tell them, I'll tell them straight up. You can go from a 5,000 to an 8,000. Well, Mark, what do you suggest? I'll tell, I'll ask them. Do you need a lot of line? Do you need a lot of line? Does the, do you need a lot of line to fight that fish? Do you need a lot of line to cast that fish? Maybe deploy your 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 uh, your bait out there? Yes, Mark, I do. Well, I'll tell them stick to a 6,000 to an 8,000. Why? Because the spool is bigger, you get more line capacity. Sometimes necessarily it does not mean that the 8,000 is stronger than the 6,000 because in a lot of cases, a 6,000 to an 8,000, even a 5,000 have the same drag power. So that doesn't necessarily mean that, but that's more detailed stuff that we can go into. So I think a 6,000 would be on the safe side, ideally with a seven foot rod that can handle anything from three, four, five, six ounces, depending, depending, um, where you're fishing, what type of weight you will be loading on that blank. Now this rod, I believe it's not graphite. This is more of an e-glass. E-glass is like a fiberglass material and those can handle a lot more. You don't wanna be chunking lures with this rod. It's like trying to chunk a lure with a broomstick. It's not gonna travel far, it's gonna go from here to there. So what do you need for an artificial lure? You're gonna need to go light tackle. So depending on the on the size of rod and reel you're using, or better say, depending on the reel that you're using, let's talk about fishing line. And I'm gonna talk about braided line. I'm not gonna talk about monofilament line because 99% of my customers are using braided line. Not really anybody's using monofilament line. I know a lot of my offshore guys, they use mono, but we're not talking about offshore fishing. We're talking about your just your simple, more commonly type of fishing. So remember, your 2500 reel, you're going with a braided line. What do I, a lot of people ask me, what line do I put? Because I, I got a lot of customers that wanna, they wanna put 50, 60 pounds on a 2500 reel. It's pointless, those reels are not made for that. Those reels, gears are so small, when you put so much pressure, you can break your reel. Not only that, but you're not gonna cast far with some thick line on a little reel. So this 2500 reel, my recommendation of braid 10, 12, 15 to 20 pounds. Any of those that you desire, go for it. These reels, most of them have any anywhere from a nine to a 22, 24 pound drag power. Doesn't mean you're gonna be using all that drag, but yeah, I would recommend anywhere from 10 to 20. Now Mark, what's the difference between 10 and 20? Easy, 10 is thinner, 20 is thicker. What are the advantages? The advantages of the 10 is that you're gonna get a lot more line in your reel and you're gonna cast a lot farther. Now your advantages of a 20 is that if you're gonna be, be if you're gonna be fishing a little more aggressively, not letting that fish do its thing and reeling in and tug of war back and forth, and you're more of a, a, a of more of a more aggressive fisherman, stick with 20 because 10 can bust. But if you take your time, you're a good fisherman. I would stick with with 10, not 20. So. If you're not sure, go on to 15, go in between, right? 2,500 reel, 3,000 reel, anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds. Your 4,000 reel. I always like to tell people, let's say you got a 4,000 reel, 4,000, you, you cut out um, two zeros, it, st it stays with a 40. Some people wanna go aggressive, go ahead and put 40 pound. Me personally, I probably go 30 pound max on that 4,000. 30 pound max. If you got the extra money to waste on line, and you're a good fisherman and you want a lot of line capacity, go 20 pound on that 4,000. On your 6,000 reel, remember 6,000, take out two zeros, it leaves you with 60. Put 60 pound test, put a, a 60 pound test max. Don't go 100, there's no need for that. There's no way that reel has 100 pound drag power. Do not go with 100 pound. If you wanna max it out, go 60. If it was me, I would go 40. I wouldn't go more than 40. I would even go 30 to 40. Why? Because that's the type of fisherman I am. The, 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 the thinner the line is, the lighter the line is, 
the better, more smooth, and the farther cast you will get. Little things like that will make a difference. So you got your small, medium, and your large, right? Small, medium, large, let's just put it like that. Light, medium, heavy. <laughs> so yeah, next time you go into a taco shop and you're not sure on, on, on what type of reel or rod to buy, always remember what type of fishing you're doing. And most importantly, the weight that you're going to be loading that rod with, okay? Now, just a refresher, weight that you're loading that rod with. Yeah, if you're gonna be loading that rod with a one ounce weight with a little piece of bait or whatever, or maybe a one ounce lure or a one ounce jig head, simple. Go with a rod that can handle up to one ounce, maybe a two ounce lure weight, right? Don't go more than that, because that's gonna be too 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 much for that rod, for that weight capacity. You're gonna be throwing a little one one eighth of an ounce jig head to maybe a quarter ounce jig head stick to your light your light setup you know and always remember to read the rod most rods out there will have specs on them read those specs they're there for a reason they're there to respect the rod and for you to handle and take care of your rod and not break it <laughs> um, so I hope this video worked out for you all. I hope to have more videos that'll help educate a lot of you all on, on what to use and all that. You know, we got a lot more stuff out there. I can't go over everything, but I think I, I thought it would, be, it would have been a good idea to go over the basics. Everyone, thanks for watching the video. I invite you all to our Spotify podcast channel. If you have not found out about it, I hope you find out now. It's LCD956 Fishing HQ on Spotify. I will put the link in the bottom so you can go visit our Spotify. And uh, we have a lot more stuff going on there. We're going to have guest speakers about fishing and fishing stories, reviews and stuff like that. So I would go out there. I would go to the Spotify and I would subscribe as soon as you finish watching this video because it's going to be awesome. We got a lot of stuff already going on there. Visit our Facebook um Visit our Facebook groups at Los Canaleros del 956. Visit our other Facebook group at LCD956 Fishing HQ. Visit our Instagram at Los Canaleros del 956. Our TikTok at Los Canaleros del 956. Because since day one that I started making videos for everybody, I try to help educate as much as I can. There are things that has worked for me. I'm not saying I'm a professional. I'm not saying that I know it all. But if it helps some of you all, that'll make my day. I know I did something good for you all, right? So check out our, our social media platforms. Do not forget to subscribe if you like this video. If you want to see more of this video, comment away. Like the video, please. Like this video so a lot more people can view it and it can be a lot, it can be viewable for a, a more larger audience. You know, if you learned something today, um, please hit that like, hit the subscribe, put a comment. Let us know what you want, what you want us to talk about on our future videos, and we might just do that. Much love on behalf of Mark Villarreal, Los Canaleros del 956, LCD 956, Paid and Tackle.